He was there on opening day in 1977, and he was there when his team lost to the eventual World Series champions late last year. It's been a heck of a run for Paul Beeston. Two world championships, a stint in the commissioner's office and the Order of Canada for his contributions to the country. Not a bad run for a kid from Welland who still doesn't know how to send an email. With that, we welcome the recently retired president of the Toronto Blue Jays for a look back at a remarkable career. It's great to have you here again. Steve, it's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, let's look back. Who was the first person the Blue Jays ever hired? Well, the first person was, was actually Millie Tancredder, but I take credit for it. I mean, I there was one it was person. You. It was me. It was, but <laughs> Millie and I joined at the same point in time, but she was a secretary at Labatt's, and, you know, when that was when you had secretaries as opposed to executive assistants, um, and she and I started together the same day. What were you doing at the time? I was an accountant at um, Coopers and Lye Brands, it then was. Accountant. PWC, as it is now. Did you have any idea what a, what a president of a baseball team does? No. I so how did you get the job? Well, I had a friend of mine who was the president of Labatt's by the name of Don McDougal. Oh, yeah. um, Labatt's brought the team here back in 1976. We played first game in 1977, but 1976. Uh, he asked me whether I was interested in moving to Toronto because what they wanted to do was put together a Canadian group that would run the front office. Uh, and, uh, you know, I didn't think twice about it. What would you uh, come to love about the job? Well, I loved the people. I mean, at the very end of the day, when you think back on it, you reflect as to what's happened in the you know, last 40 years. Uh, the memories are the people. The memories, not the players necessarily, but they are the players. Uh, but also the scouts, the development people, the front office people, the people you met that were sponsors, the people you met in the media. The, you know, it was just a very, very fortunate. And the good thing about it was that, you know, people from Welland I kept in touch with because of the job. People from Western I kept in touch because of the job. People from Coopers and Library. And then you expand it, you know, you got to see much of the world. So uh, I was very, very fortunate in a career that, you know, that probably I didn't deserve with a good C average coming out of Western. Can you just go like this? That's not bad, eh? It's it kind of not bad to wear one of those. No, it was it was fun to be part of that team, 92 and 93, Steve. I mean, you know, we had, you know, that kind of build up to it. You know, we were good in 1984, and we were really good for the rest of the 80s. Uh, 1990, 1991, we got the playoffs in 91, then 92, 93, it all came together. 91, you know, or 92, 90 was when we brought in Dave Stewart, or we brought in, um, uh, uh, I guess that night was Jack Morris and, and Dave Winfield, and the next year was Paul Molitor and Dave Stewart, you know, and, you know, the team came together, and it was just fun. But, you know, you saw what the city was all about, too. Mm -hmm. Where's the other one? The other one is in the safety deposit box. The other Because <laughs> you got two of them, I guess, I eh? I guess I have two, yes. Yeah, not bad at all. Were those your favorite years with the Jays, those early 90s? Yeah, I think that, you know, they were, they, were a special, they were a special time because it was a build-up. I mean, from an excitement point of view, nothing took the place of August and September and October. The city was insane, year. wasn't it? The city was insane, the province was insane, and the country was insane. And it caught the attention of everybody in New York. It caught the attention of other owners around, the, around, uh, around America. But it was just this all of a sudden pent up feeling like, man, we spiked. I mean, we didn't drift up like we did in those other years. We spiked and everybody caught on to it. Everybody, like, we all caught on to it, you know. And it was fun. I mean, we're the entertainment business, but we had a good team. But we also had good people on that team. I mean, when David, you know, when David Price came in here, you know, with the attitude that he brought in, and you know, the other guys like you know the hardball players like T Tulowitzki and Do and and Josh Donaldson, and then of course you got Jose and flipping the bat. I mean, the entertainment value there was like <laughs> something we're not going to see for a long time. You got that right. Now this is a hard question to answer. Uh, who gets the lion's share of the credit for the fact that this team won back-to-back -back World Series? Oh, I would say Pat. I mean, you know, and, Pat you know yeah. I, but the other part that gets the lion's share, the, the lion's share would have to be the ownership. I mean, you know, ownership never gets enough credit for what they do. I mean, ownership will always get blamed if they don't win mm -hmm. because they didn't spend money, they made the wrong decisions, they got the wrong people in the wrong jobs, you know, they'll come up with all that. But at the very end of the day, we had very solid ownership. Labatt's owned 45 percent, Howard Webster owned 45 percent, and the CIBC owned 10 percent. It was run as an independent, autonomous group, and we had our board of directors, and that group was good for council. It was good for, you know, the money, obviously, but, you know, it made sure that we, we had the experience that they brought to the board table. And when you think back at our board over the years, I mean, it was a spectacular board that really did, that really did a job for us. So, you know, we were very fortunate, and they taught us a lot. I think former Premier Robarts was on the board, was he Premier not for a while? Premier Robarts was the man who got us called the Toronto Blue Jays. He if you hadn't seen a Blue Jay, if you hadn't seen that Blue Jay when he was shaving story. that day, it's a good well, story. I mean, it's a great story. Yeah. We we're trying to come up with a name back in 1976, and um, Premier Robarts, uh, who was on the board at the time, was representative for Howard Webster. Uh, he was shaving. He said, "I was just sitting there one day, and I just 
shave. And I said, I saw a blue jay out there. What about blue jays? Well, the Labatt people couldn't believe it because they had Labatt blue. Mm -hmm. You know, they, could, they couldn't really bring this forward because they were trying to make sure that, you know, they weren't pushing their agenda. And so all of a sudden, blue jay took off. And we created the Blue Jays. So, you know, it's like if he'd seen the crow. I mean, well, we've been the Toronto Crows. I have no idea, but he, 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 was, ter he was terrific. And we <laughs> had a, a, a really good uh, conscience for our, all that we were doing, and that would have to be, and that would really have to be uh, Peter Hardy. I mean, Peter Hardy, you know, was our um, chairman uh, after Howard died, but, you know, was kind of the, uh, I don't know, the conscience of the club. And more important than that, he kept us focused, and he was tough as nails, but, you know, we had our back, and he believed in youth, because we were all kids. I mean, remember, we were in the 30s and 40s. I mean, you know, and they you gave us kids, this thing. But, but you know, the, the, the Blue Jays back in the day were the highest spending team in baseball. People back forget in about 92, that. Back in 93, yeah, 92, we were the highest, 93, we were the second highest. So what you know? happened? Well, I think a lot of things happened, you know, and I can't really answer what, because I left in, in 97, we were still high in 96 and 97. Uh, and then I think partly because of the Canadian dollar and partly because of the way they were doing the team, you know, things changed, you know, they weren't putting the money into the team at that point in time. Uh, you know, but it started again back in 2013 when we made those trades. You know, we took our salaries up from 90 million to 125, 130 million dollars. What's the highest spending team in baseball? The highest spending team in baseball would be over Dodgers. 200 million. The Dodgers would be number one, and number two would be the Yankees of Boston. And you know, and the Yankees in Boston are in the division. But you know, I always thought that was good because you, you know, we're in the entertainment business. I mean, how would you not want one quarter of your schedule against the Yankees in Boston? I mean, it, that's fun. That's what the game is I all like about. I like your line. You had a line once upon a time. Somebody said, "Would you mind going to the American League Central from the East?" And you said, "Sure, happy to go as long as the Boston and the Yankees go. That's not, right. not a problem. Like, yeah. I think it's what it's all about. I think you know we are in that business." A year after you guys won your second World Series. Baseball stopped. The players went on strike. There was no World Series, uh, which is hard to imagine, but that's the way it was. And um, you want to see what you looked like 21 years ago? <laughs> you were here. You were here in this studio. It looked a lot different, but you were here 21 years ago on a program we used to do called Studio Two. Mm -hmm. And we talked about what would happen to baseball now that the players were on strike. Sheldon, roll the clip, please. This is not doing anything for the game. And we've got to get a long-term deal, Steve. We've got to get a deal where we can grow the game together with the players because we have effectively broken a trust with the fans, being the people that whose game this really is. I mean, it's not a platitude to say that. I mean, I really firmly believe it. And we have broken that trust, and somehow it's going to take us some time to build it back. First of all, are you wearing the same glasses? The same glasses, the <laughs> same style. Same, <laughs> same, same style. Same style. <laughs> okay. Second of all, um, clearly... The trust did come back because baseball's bigger now than it's ever been. And I wonder how that happened. It took time. It, you know, it didn't just come back. I mean, you know, we lost the 94 World Series, 95, 96 was a problem. But then we had, you know, forget whether, the, you know, you the performance enhancing drugs. I mean, you had the Sammy Sosa versus Mark McGuire. Then you had Barry Bonds and, you know, the home runs were going out. But also the Yankees started to win. And in the late, in the late 90s, the Yankees winning, you know, brought everybody, because everyone has a feeling about the Yankees. You either cheer for them or you cheer against them. So when you they're know, good, but it's good for baseball. It's, it's very good for baseball. I mean, I think I think it's always very good for baseball when the Yankees are, you know, are, are relevant. You know, you'd like the to beat them. That, though. But, they, you know, there's no question. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that that happened. And then, you know, we started to, you know, progress the game. I mean, you know, we got to the grassroots and we got good young players coming into the game. And we got it so it was exciting. And, you know, so I think that, you know, there was that almost, but, you know, it, nothing replaces winning. Mm. You know, and the problem that we had in Toronto was we weren't winning. You know, so you can have hope starting, you know, on the 1st of April when you start the season. But, you know, it takes a little bit of time, you know, to win. And once you start winning, we saw what happened this year. Mm -hmm. There are uh, obviously presidents who are deeply involved in signing of new players, and then there are presidents who are not. Uh, of the signings that you were very much involved in, which ones are you proudest of? Well, I guess at the very end, I mean, you know, whether you like it or don't like it, I mean, the Roger Clemens signing, it was hard to believe because no one said you could get him. And I mean, still remember going down there, you know. Into to Texas. His house, to, to, to Texas, into his house. And the Hendricks brothers took us in, took me in, and we went there. And, you know, the Yankees were after him at the same time because he had determined he was leaving Boston. That was absolute determination. And I remember telling George Steinbrenner, who was, you know, a, a, a good friend and a, and a close friend. I mean, you know, George said, you know, he'd been down there taking the picture with the family, done everything, you know, and he'd sign a lot of autographs. And I said, well, I got an autograph too, George. I said, what's that? I said, 
I got I got Roger Clemens autograph on a contract. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell you what he called me and what he called Canadians and what he called everybody what he said? else. Come on, tell us. No, 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 no. Was there some profanity? Uh, there, in there was a little profanity, yeah. and I, you know, and, and and God bless him, you know. Uh, but you know, it was it was it was it was fun. Then I think you know all of Let the me stop signings. you there though. On the Clemens signing, did you have any inkling at that time that he was involved in performance enhancing no, drugs? Absolutely. Do you not. think he was at that time? I have no idea. I have no idea. He says he hasn't ever taken them, so I'm going to take him at face value. I mean, really? We can all have our fit. We can all have our opinions on it. But you know what? The fact of the matter is, the answer is no. And I think even back in you know, when we're talking about you know the you know the home run hitting derby of, two, mm -hmm. of 1997 and 1998. You know, was it creatine? Were these guys working on? If you know the money that was being put around there, and a guy gets big, and a guy, you know, all of a sudden, you know, looks like he is a um, like he's an like he's an athlete again. Say, well, you know, he's a small corporation. He's making ten million, twelve million dollars. Naivety in re retrospect, absolutely. There's no question. You know that you know we have our head in the sand. Yes, who's responsible for it? Many people. Players, the players' association, ownership, the you know, commissioner's office, everybody. Well, there was the a fact conspiracy was, to turn well, the other way. Well, it wasn't, but it was, it was a conspiracy, or it was just dumb. Okay, but nevertheless, it was what it was, and you know there is no question that you know that we should have been, we should have been more vigilant. If you had a Hall of Fame ballot, does uh, Barry Bonds or Roger Clemens ever get into the Hall of Fame? Today, no. Tomorrow, yes. To the next day, no. Like I keep on changing, I keep on changing my mind. I mean, you know what it, what it is. I mean, I really do believe that you know that there are certain players who were named and certain players who were not named. You know, and you know, because there was the George Mitchell investigation and he named certain players, I mean, they then got painted with that brush. Well, you know, he might not have looked at the West Coast and they didn't get painted with that brush and so they escaped it. So gotcha. what is the answer to it? And what percentage was using it? You know, was it 10%, was it 20%, mm -hmm. was it close to 70 or 80%? So we can get into that, but you know, the reality of the situation is, Steve, I mean, there was entertainment value at that point in time and we were playing and, you know, so at some point I suspect that, you know, that, mm -hmm. that it happens, but when, I'm not sure. Are you troubled at all by the hypocrisy of the indignation over steroids when you and I both know damn well that back in the day, and I'm talking about Hank Aaron's day, which is, of course, pristine pure. No, no it wasn't. They were on greenies, no they were on uppers no and bennies and downers and whatever they needed to, to get through a season. And yet those guys didn't have to deal with those issues. Is no, that a problem? Did. Yeah, it sure does. I mean, I think you always have to look at it from that point of view. I mean, you know, we have different standards for different eras. You know, and they were taking that. But I think the biggest standard that we have to look at right now is the fact that we should be doing this the same way we used tobacco. You know, and as a cigar smoker, it's, a, it's kind of hypocritical for me to be saying this. But nevertheless, I will say it. I mean, we should be talking about the education and what the steroid can do to your body. Mm. We shouldn't be worried about how much, you know, it's going to affect us, whether you're hitting, throwing, whatever you're going to be doing, but how much it can affect your body. Because it's time-tested, you know, that you know that players that use steroids, I mean, probably have less mortality. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, how this game has changed in all of your time there. What did the Jays cost to purchase in 1976? Uh, well, actually, $6,250,000 Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. What are they worth today? Well, you read a billion dollars or a billion or more, but I would think that in that neighborhood, if you said a billion dollars or said a billion plus, I mean, I think that you would be, you would be right, U.S. That's unbelievable. So the next question is, it's the Bill Vec question. This game must be pretty great to survive the idiot owners who run it. How is it that this, how is it that this has happened? Well, I mean, I think we all know. I mean, there's new stadiums, there's new sources of revenue, but the big source of revenue, obviously, is television. Um, I think when I got into the game originally, I would have said that probably 90% of the revenue came from ticket sales, uh, and then maybe 8 or 9% of it came from television, a little bit from ancillary. I mean, you know, we sold $35 million worth of merchandise last year, <laughs> you know, and that I think was probably from July the 1st on, but you might have been August the 1st, and you know, so it was only the three months. But it was all there. So the game has changed, but it's become, you know, it's become, it's television, you know. And in baseball, you know, you have 162 games in 179 days, not counting spring training. Mm. So, I mean, you know, you have, with very little production costs, you know, you have what amounts to be, you know, three and a half hours every single day. And, you know, and it becomes, you know, a must-see TV if you're a good team, you yeah. know. And we could watch the ratings. We can watch the ratings. As this team got good and as the stadium started to fill up, the more important part were the ratings. And it was, you know, basically from Newfoundland to, 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 to Victoria, you know, like it went right to British Columbia. It was, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and it didn't matter what time we were playing. I mean, we were watching. 
And the one thing that we got, which was really interesting last year, although it had been there a couple years before, when we went on the road, you know, I don't want to call us Notre Dame, but I always say we don't play, we don't play a road game, you know, because we could go into Seattle and we could own the city. We could mm -hmm. go in Detroit, we could own the city. You know, you go to Boston, you see Blue Jays everywhere. Man, when I went down to the playoffs this year in Texas, I met four guys in the saloon, you know, that had taken their time, and one's wife was his birthday, they were four farmers from Saskatchewan. But they had flown in. They were going where we were going, you know, and it was just, you know, it captured, it captured, it captured the community and the country. Despite, despite everything you have done for this team, your name is on the Ring of Fame, right? At the Sky Dome. Sorry, yeah. I still call it the Sky Dome. Right. Your name is on the Ring of Fame. You're the first employee ever hired by the team. Uh, you worked in the commissioner's office. You've been the president twice of the Blue Jays. November 5th, 2014, the ownership of this team actually goes behind your back and susses out trying to find a replacement for you without even telling you. What'd you think of that, Paul? Well, I think I was going to say what, I always, what I've said since then. I mean, you know, what happened happened, what didn't happen didn't happen, and the rest is where it is. I mean, you know, I was there for another year, being able to work with the people that we work with. We were able to have some success this year, and I left on a high note. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk about what happened. I mean, obviously, you know, if you ask me if I liked it, no, I didn't like it. I mean, that would be wrong for me to say that. But nevertheless, I had a job to do, you know, and, you know, in that period, when they did it, before Alex and everybody else find out about it, you know, we signed Donaldson or traded for Donaldson, we signed Russell Martin, we moved the team forward. You know, I'm quite proud of the fact that, you know, we put ourselves in position to win because I was getting paid good dollars to make sure that I did the right job. And, you know, and so it was incumbent upon me to make sure that I stuck with the, with, with the program. And the program was good. But at the very end of the day, we're here for this year, we put it where we were, we had some fun, and you know what, it happened. You know, I can't do anything about it. I get all that, but you're, you're, you're gone now, right? Right. So you can presumably say more about this than you could have when they were actually still signing your paycheck. Could, but I mean, there's nothing to, big, to gain by it. I think that at some point in time, I don't hope I never talk about it. I mean, it's like someone says, write a book, okay? Write a book, what's it gonna do? It's gonna hurt people. I mean, it can only hurt people. If you tell the truth, whether or not, no, no, I'm not talking about here. I mean, what good is it gonna do? I know what Just happened. Just correct the record. Well, the record, I mean, you know what, the bottom line of it is, let's talk about 2015 being, you know, the year that we almost made it to the World Series, you know, we and we could have, we got first and third and nobody <laughs> out in the top of the ninth. Yes, I know. We will <laughs> talk about that, but I'm not done with this yet. Did you, I mean, the, the, the reason this became public was because Edward Rogers, who I guess is the head guy there, called your best friend. Yeah. And he didn't know he was your best friend. No. Jerry Reinsdorf in Chicago. He did. Called him to suss out whether or not Reinsdorf would give up his president to run the Jays. Right. So Edward didn't know too much about baseball, I guess, if he made that kind of phone call. Well, he didn't know my relationship, clearly. He did with not. Me. He did not want to play. But, but you know what, Steve? We can talk about this all you want. You know, A, you're not going to... No, no, but you're, A, you're not going to trick me. I'll tell, I'll, tell, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you that much. But nor do I really care about it anymore. What I care about is that we were able to get through this no, year and get some fun. You, when you found this out, though, what was the first phone call you made? Who'd you call? I told my wife, and I said, I cannot believe, you know, what I just heard. And I said, but I never had an exit strategy, and this is an exit strategy. And then I woke up the next morning, and I said, man, I've got a lot of people that I work with, you know, a lot of people that count on me. And also, I mean, there's this, you know, it's incumbent upon me to kind of be a leader right now, and we've got things to do, and I don't know what is happening. And because, you know, it was a phone call, doesn't mean anything was going to happen at that point in time. But, you know, we really wanted to work it out. So I have no ill feelings towards anybody. And I'd be Even very, Edward? No, nope, Edward. Did you confront no. him about this we, when you found out? We, well, I didn't confront him, but we had discussions. There's no question about full that. Full and frank discussions, yeah, as they say in politics? Full and frank, full and frank discussion, which was, yeah. which was fair. But, you know, at the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, we got through that period. And then we got, you know, at the end of January. Yeah, I said, but let I'm me say it, because you don't want to say it, but let me say it. You should have been able to orchestrate your departure on your terms, given all you had done for the team. Right? You'll, well, you'll acknowledge that. Well, I, you know, at the, at the end of the day, that's what happened. I mean, you know, like I stayed out for years, so, you know, you can't say that I didn't. I mean, you, you cannot say that I didn't. I mean, you know, at the Way very end of the day, it well, well, it was a, it, it was a, it was a, it was a little more challenging. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's put it that way. Okay, last question on this, because we're not going to spend all day on this, even though I'd like to. Do you have Rogers Cable in your home? I do. You still do? I, no, I have Rogers Cable, I have Rogers Phone. <laughs> no, and no I, and kidding. I, I, have, I have it all. After all this? Yeah, I have it all. Okay, that's fascinating. And I still drink Labatt beer and I back at the CIBC. And Mr. Webster owned the Globe and I read the Globe, okay? okay? So, you know, you've got loyalty means something. You are a company man. Okay, good for you. Uh, here are some um, 
Well, I wouldn't call them trivia questions, but I, do, like, I know what the right answers to these questions are, so I want to see if you agree. Who is the best player ever to wear a Blue Jay uniform? Robbie Alomar. Okay, you are correct. Who is the best pitcher ever to pitch for the Jays? Dave Steep. Very good. But you could go with Roger because, you know, he won the Triple Crown the two years. I mean, but, you know, Dave Steeb, when, you know, I mean, you couldn't hit that slider. Yeah. I mean, you know, and more important is more important that he did it with some bad teams. You know, and I think him. about this thing. I and mean, for a long time. You could look out his record. I mean, this was an outfielder that, you know, went through the minor leagues in less than half a year mm. and pitched 105 innings down there and came up here in 1979, was 8-8. Eight eight. He was only drafted in 1978. But, I mean, he was a guy that, I mean, just gave you, and he would pitch 275 innings. You know, Amazing. guy hits yeah. 200 innings right now, he pitched 275. But I, you know, I go back I go back to Dave Steve. But there were there were a number of really good, because you can't say Well, the say kids will that, say Doc Halliday. Well, you can right. put Doc Halliday in there, but I don't think he was Dave Steve. Right. I mean, you know what? But you can put Doc Halliday in there. I mean, Doc Halliday has, 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 was, was a good one, you know, and as was Roger, you know, you know, as was Jimmy Key. And you, know, you can come, mm. back, come back to me with Jack. Jimmy Moore's Key wasn't won the no, he wasn't the best. Dave Steve. Yeah. Who was the best manager ever to manage the Jays? Well, my my, my opinion, uh, that that's a tough one because I'm close to all of them, you know, so I don't want to that's put why it on. We had, we, had, we, had, we had different managers for different times. I mean, Bobby Cox was a terrific manager. I mean, you know, he took us where, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to go from uh, up to 85. You know, as you recall that, we went to game seven of... Of, of the of the American League playoffs that year, lost you know, and the then Royals. lost to the Royals, and you know we up three one, and we lost four, we lost four three in the in the se in the seventh game. Um, but uh, but Cito, I mean, you look at what Cito has done. Cito uh, Gaston. You look at what Cito did. I mean, he took a team, you know, that was twelve and twenty four, got us to the playoffs in eighty nine. Then he took the team in nineteen ninety, the last day. Ninety one were in the playoffs. Ninety two, ninety three. He was the right manager for that team. It was a veteran team. He let them play. He gave them the confidence. I mean, to me, you know, it, it was different guys for different times because you can go back to Bobby Maddock for two years when he put Barfield, Mosby, Steve, mm -hmm. um, you know, Bell, all those guys. I mean, brought up the kids, which was the benefit, what, what Bobby, became, Bobby uh, Cox became the benefit of, you know. And then you got Gibby. I mean, you know, you, you've, you've got them all. But you know what? They've all got that. They've all got something that, that, that you can say positive about. How many baseball games do you think you've seen in your life? Well, then let's just let's just go let's just go around uh, somewhere around thirty five hundred to four thousand. Okay, they, live, live. So four thousand baseball games. Uh, so that's thirty six thousand innings. Right. Have you ever, in your life, of those thirty six thousand innings, ever seen anything crazier than what happened in the seventh of Game Five of the ALDS last year? Never. 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 You can't make this up. I mean, <laughs> you can't make up, you know, the bat that shoot went out in the middle of the bat, you know, that that the, the Martin hit. You can't make up the flipping of the bat. You can't make up all of the all the things that went on. I mean, you know, nobody I mean, that's why baseball is great in some respects, because you know there is no time clock. You know, so that you know that every pitch and the defense starts with the ball. I mean, remember that. Everyone forgets that. It's an Al Woodmar mm -hmm. line. You know, it's one of the sports where the defense starts with the ball yeah. and you see if you can hit it. But I haven't seen anything like it. And the tension just built and built and built and built. And I know some people, you know, didn't like the bat flip, you know, and they said, you know, that he was showing up. But I'll tell you what, again, we're in the entertainment business. I mean, it was pretty special to watch. It was righteous. No, oh, it was outstanding. I mean, he wasn't was showing anybody up. He, he was, was just. And he looking at that dugout doing the whole thing. I'm telling you, Steve, <laughs> it was fantastic. Who's going to be the American League representative in the 2016 World Series? John Blue Jays. I think John Blue Jays got a good team. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. So we don't have David Price. You know that's a huge loss. Okay, but we're better defensively. We're getting Stroman back. We're going to score a lot of runs. And I like what I heard from Donaldson the other day. We don't need great pitching. We need good pitching, hmm. because you know we're going to score runs. But you look, you're going to have Osuna. You got whether Sanchez starts or is in the bullpen. You got Cecil back. You know they picked up Stenson from uh, from Washington. You know so the bullpen. I, I don't know anyone's going to ever put together three closers the way that they did at the Yankees. Oh, uh, Yankees. You know right? the Yankees. Yeah. I like the Yankees have done. But you know yeah. what? We're going to have we're going to have we're going to have a good team and we're going to have fun. Let me ask you about your replacement, Mark yeah. Shapiro. He has had about as rocky a start to a big job in sports as anybody ever. Rightly so. Oh, no, no, absolutely, he's had a rocky start. But, you know, it all happened the way that, you know, when Alex decided he wasn't coming back. And thought You know, yeah, Alex and Thoughtless decided he wasn't coming back. Uh, Mark came in here. Mark is a good person. He's got good values. He comes from a good family. He knows his father very, very well. Um, I think that he's going to do a terrific job, so we've got to give him a chance. I mean, I honestly believe, give him a chance, and I think they will deliver. I mean, they've got a good team this year, 
You know, it's going to start another three weeks of spring training, and then it's going to be starting in another seven or nine weeks, eight weeks at, for the regular season. And then all of a sudden, you're going to see what you'll see what it's all about. And he can get away from talking about, you know, Alex is gone. Alex is in Los Angeles. Alex like family to me. I mean, you know, I, I love the guy. I mean, I love the guy. But he's gone. I mean, he's gone. So now it's been turned over. This is the first time teams have been turned over. You know, and so we come off of this high. We have did all these trades. Everything worked out very, very well for the months of August, September, October. And it was like, you know, we had won five World Series. Well, we hadn't, okay? Mm -hmm. But we got there and we had fun. It would have been nice of every you know, but it didn't. And I think Mark Shapiro will do a terrific job. I really do. I think because he's got, he's got a baseball pedigree, number one. Uh, he's been on the development side. He's been with a small market team, but uh, also a winning team in Cleveland. You know, they've won a couple of times when he was the general manager. Sorry, the sorry, I must have missed that. What did they win? They, well, they didn't win the World Series. Right. They didn't win the World Series, but they were very good in the late 90s. So, I mean, uh, he, let's just let's just make sure that we give him a fair shot. He's deserving of the fair shot because I know what happened when it happened. And, it, you know, it was, it, it, was, it, was, it was A, tough to watch, but, you know, kind of understandable in some ways, too. Is it a case of, I mean, you know how Canadians can be very insular about these things. Was it a case of... Here's our sort of hometown boy being replaced by this American, and therefore he didn't get an even shot when he came in? Yeah, I think it was partly that, but I mean, let's be realistic about it. Alex just said, you know, it's not going to work out. It's not a fit, okay? And so what do you mean why it's not a fit? Why do we have to lose this guy? I mean, he's been too valuable. He's from Montreal. He's one of us, okay? But he left, you know, and he's in Dodgers town now, and you know, he can be... But you say he left. I mean, he's, he left because he didn't think he had a fit with the new guy. Well, so that's the, why yeah, people but, blame the new guy. Well, yeah, but you can't blame him that, you know, he grew up in baseball. You can't grow up. You can't blame him because he absolutely, absolutely has his, his 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 heart on the baseball side of it. You know, not on the business side of it, like I was, and you know, morphed into the baseball side of it. You know, you can't blame him for that. Okay. Um, does he se seek your opinions on anything, Shapiro? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, on a, on a, on an irregular basis, but the answer is yes. And you know, we have a, we have a very cordial and I would say growing relationship. So you still have an I'm, office at the stadium. I still have an office at the stadium, but you know. It goes back, he, you know, like I was friends with his father when his father was an agent, you know, mm -hmm. and his father is, you know, has now got into the point of, you know, speaking and, and, and motivational, uh, motivational uh, speaking. Uh, but, you know, like, so it wasn't that I didn't know him, although I didn't know him well. I mean, there is 22 years age difference, mm -hmm. you know, and so, I mean, it's not like, the, it's not like they were in the same, like, he actually knows how to use a computer. He actually knows how to use that. <laughs> you really state. don't know how he to send an email knows yet, how to do, do you? That Twitter. No, that no, is hilarious. He, knows, he knows how to do all those things, and, you know, and he, <laughs> And, he, and he's current, you know. He probably doesn't drink as much beer as I do. I don't think he probably smokes. He eats, you know, he eats, he eats, he eats fresh fruit. You're you know? different cats, you two. Except that, you know what? It takes different types to win things. And, yeah. you know, and so, uh, you know, I'm happy to help him as any way he wants, but I'm certainly not going to interfere. When you pass the baton, which is a very difficult thing to do sometimes, you hope the guy that you pass it to runs faster. And, you know, I'm cheering for the Blue Jays. I hope they win this year. Just finally, you're 70 now, right? 70. 70 years old. So what's in your future now, Paul Beeston? Well, you know, I sit a couple of boards and I will get back in. I mean, the one thing that when I was retired between 2002 and 2009, I got involved with CAMH, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. And um, I found that extremely rewarding because, you know, it was a whole new area to look into and to work with people and to, you know, get different views as to where uh, we were going with mental health and addictions. And, um, you know, some way, shape, or form, I will probably get back into some type of volunteer work, um, you know, and it will be preferably in the mental health area because I enjoy it and I enjoy dealing with the, with the people that are so committed to it and I can see where the, you know, the, 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 the progress it's been making into the, into the study and the academics of it. You, know, you have so, a personal family connection to that issue? Well, other than probably my own in some respects, but, you know, and I don't mean to make light of it, but the answer is no, but I, you know, I, got, I, got, I got put into this back in 2002 by a friend who suggested I would do it. I met with Paul Garfinkel and Pam Freilich, who was the chairman of the board at that time, and I really didn't understand how the four hospitals had come together. This was one where, you know, they put... Uh, Queen Street Mental Health together with the Clark, together with the Addiction mm -hmm. Research Foundation, together with the Domwitz. And you know what? I was fortunate to be there because that was about 1998. And by 2002, you know, all the bumps have been worked out. And it was a growth mode at that point in time. And it is a terrific, terrific institution that, you know, that we should be very proud of here. And the research that's being done uh, is something that I think is not going to help just the city of Toronto, the province of Ontario, or the country of Canada. It's going to actually be something that can be transported around the world. So it's fantastic. Okay. Last question. Um, I forget the date of opening day. Is it like April 3rd or something like that? This year? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, what, are you going? No, it's in Tampa Bay, but I'll go the one in Toronto oh, against okay. Boston. That's what I meant. Toronto, I'll go the one in Toronto, Toronto against, against Boston. Boston. So yeah. that's the, is that the 8th? Yeah, no, the 8th, whatever. Okay. It's a Friday night. You I will, will be, be going. There. I will be there. Is it going to be weird to walk into that stadium knowing you're not the guy anymore? No, because you... I, people do not want to understand this. I was retired from 2002 to 2009, but and I went time, to the games. I think but I, I went to the games. You know, right know that bad thing. Exactly. You know. <laughs> but the, an the answer, answer to that is no, I'll be the chief cheerleader. I believe you. Paul Beeston, it's always good of you to visit TVO. This is, I think, your fourth visit over the years, and it's been fun to watch you grow up over those Steve many, many years. Thank you for the courtesy of inviting me. It's been fun, and um, good luck. Nice studio. <laughs> Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.